So I'm explaining game theory, and in particular, I'm explaining situations where two players are playing a game against each other, and it's a simultaneous moves game. And simultaneous moves means that um, both players make a decision, and at the same time, their decisions are revealed, and once they're revealed, the players get a payoff. So a lot of times, um, the the oligopoly application has to do with setting high prices and low prices, or investing or not investing, but there's lots of uses of game theory, and this is just a general um, tutorial on how you read a game theory tree and find the Nash equilibrium. So, first thing you have to do is know how to read this particular payoff matrix, and we have two players, Lisa and Ted, and we need to number our players, and we always number them from left to right, just like we read. So Lisa is player number one, and Ted is player number two. Now each payoff box is associated with a particular outcome. So this box here is when Lisa chose the high price, and Ted chose a high price as well. Um, and in the box, we have two payoffs, and they go once again from right to left. So player one, which was Lisa, gets five dollars or utils or whatever if um, both players choose high and Ted gets six dollars or utils if both players choose high. Um, if Lisa chooses low and Ted chooses high price then we're down here Lisa gets four, Ted gets three. So that's how you read a payoff matrix. Now we're looking for the Nash equilibrium and this is really a way of thinking about the best response to each other's um, to each other's choices. So to do this, we're gonna first do it using best response tables, and then I'm gonna show you a faster way of doing the same thing on the table, on the payoff matrix itself. So, um, best response analysis. We need to check both of the other players' payoffs to, to think about what our best response is. So each of these tables has a particular perspective, and this is player one's table, so this is Lisa's table, and she needs to think about her best response to each of player two's strategies. So player two's strategies are to go high or to go low. So let's write those in there. Player two could go high, player two could go low. And Lisa, player one, needs to think, what is my best response if player two, if Ted chooses high? So if Ted chooses a high price, we know we're in one of these two matrices, right? Um, and Lisa is choosing between the two, and she wants to know which of these two matrices do I like, given that Ted has gone high. And she looks at her payoff, which is the first payoff, since she's player one, and she compares the five to the four, and she likes the five better, so her best response is to go high if Ted goes high. Her best response is high. Now, um, if Ted goes low, we need to do the same analysis. So if Ted chooses low, we're going to be in one of these two boxes. And Lisa will be choosing between the two and the three, and she likes the three better. So if Ted goes low, she will wish she would have gone low. So her best response is low. And that's Lisa's table. Now we need to change over and switch our thinking into Ted's perspective. So we're going to do Ted's table, player two's table. And he needs to think about his best response to each of Lisa's strategies. So Lisa's two strategies are to go high or low. High. And if Lisa goes high, then we're in one of these two boxes. So Ted needs to figure out which is his best response in these boxes. And among the four payoffs listed here, he only cares about his own payoffs, which are the second ones listed since he's player two. And between the six and the seven, he likes the seven best. So his best response is to choose low if Lisa chooses high. If Lisa chooses low, we're down here in, in one of these two boxes. And Ted is choosing between the three and the four, and he likes the four better. So his best response is to go low. So in this case, we actually notice that Ted is going to want to go low no matter what Lisa does. So um, Ted actually has a dominant strategy, which is to go low. Lisa does not have a dominant strategy, because whether she goes high or low actually depends on what um, Ted is going to do. Of course, this simultaneous moves game, so she doesn't know what he's going to do yet. 
So how do we find the Nash equilibrium? The Nash equilibrium is where we have a pair of things that match each other. So Ted goes high, um, and Nash equilibrium is essentially where each player's best response is each player's at a best response to the other player's strategy. So um, if Ted goes high, Lisa wants to go high. We can check that to see if there's a match over here. Well, if Lisa goes high, Ted wants to go low, so that's not a match. So we can try this one. If Ted goes low, Lisa wants to go high. Sorry, Lisa wants to go low. If Lisa goes low, Ted wants to go low. So these two are best responses to each other. So this pairing gives us our Nash equilibrium. Two players are playing their best responses given what the other player did. There's, it's, Nash equilibrium is a no regret strategy. Given what the other player ended up doing, I'm happy with my choice. I would not have changed it. So we want to find um, a different way of doing this that's a little bit faster on this table. And we can do that by going through the exact same logic except on the actual table. And we're going to circle the payoffs that are relevant. So we have to remember to think that we need to start in Lisa's perspective. And we're going to do everything in Lisa's perspective before switching to Ted's perspective. So in thinking of Lisa's perspective, we only care about the first payoff in each of these boxes, because those are Lisa's payoffs. So Lisa's perspective, when we do this, we need to check each of Ted's strategies. So Lisa's thinking about herself, and she says, if Ted goes high, what will I prefer to have done, gone high or gone low. And she likes the five better than the four, so she's going to circle this, meaning if Ted goes high, that's what I wish I would have gotten. If Ted chooses to go low, she's in this side of the matrix, and she's choosing between two and three, and she likes the three better. So we've just gone through Lisa's table, um, just visually on this payoff matrix. Now we need to switch perspectives and think about Ted's perspective, meaning our second payoff here is the one that's going to be relevant. But when we do Ted's payoff, we need to think about Lisa's strategies. So Ted says, okay, if Lisa goes high, what will I wish I would have done? And he's checking if, to, if Lisa goes high, he's either going to get a six or a seven, and he would have wished that he would have gotten a seven. If Lisa goes low, we know we're in one of these two boxes, so Ted's choosing between the three and the four, and he's going to choose the four. That's the one he wished he would have gotten. And then after you've done this, anytime you have two circles in the same box, you have a Nash equilibrium. Whoops, Nash. Nash equilibrium. And we can check it, and we see here we had our low, 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 low with our Nash equilibrium, and that's also what we found when we used this strategy in the payoff box. So that's how you solve simultaneous moves games to find the Nash equilibrium in game theory.